In July 1944, when the Second World War started to come to an end and it became clear that Japan was facing defeat, a decision was made. A vast underground shelter should be dynamited into the Japanese Alps. Designed to withstand B-29 bombings and large enough to be used as alternative headquarters for the main organs of the government, including the Imperial General's headquarter, the ministries and the then state-run broadcasting station NHK. Later, in March 1945, it was decided that it should also include a subterranean palace so that the Japanese Emperor could be relocated into the area as well. On November 11, 1944, the construction began. 7,000 Korean slave laborers had to work under inhumane conditions in three 8-hour and later two 12-hour shifts. Drilling holes into the rock, then blowing it up with dynamite. Collecting the stones by hand and carrying them out. Living in rough and ready houses that sometimes couldn't even keep the snow out in winter. On a diet of 70% corn-like foods and 30% rice, they suffered from malnutrition and hunger. The total number of victims of the construction is unknown. However, one of the survivors stated that five to six persons died in a day at the worst, which would set the number of casualties at up to 1,500 people. A house of comfort women, so-called Ianfu, was constructed and Korean women were brought in and forced to offer sexual services. This picture shows the original house, which was destroyed in 1991, and its interior. The Emperor Hirohito himself was not informed about the project until May 1945. When asked to relocate into the bunker, he refused twice. It has been suggested that he feared to lose control in case he relocated, which would have allowed the army to rule in his name, pursuing war at any cost and to even more suicidal extremes. When Japan surrendered in August 1945, about 75% of the shelter had been finished. More than 10 kilometers of tunnel had been dynamited into the mountains. The town that was selected for the construction was Matsushiro, which later became a part of Nagano City. Mount Minakami became the storehouse. Mount Maizuru housed the Imperial Palace and Mount Zo, the mountain the shot was taken on, was supposed to contain the government ministries and NHK. In 1985, an about 500 meter long part of the tunnels in Mount Zo was opened to the public. The entrance is about 10 kilometers from Nagano Station and can best be reached by taking the bus to Matsushiro and then walking for about a kilometer. It can be entered free of charge and that's exactly what I did. The entrance is small and unspectacular. Helmets are a must. Now let's go. The tunnel is long and cold. Every couple of meters you will get a chance to take a look at the tunnels that branch off into the darkness. Then you can get a bit of an idea what it must have felt like working here under the mountains with thousands of other people feeling hungry, cold and miserable. In case you are wondering why the helmets are necessary, some parts of the tunnel are not very high. When leaving the bunker and coming closer to the exit, it becomes warmer and one is reminded of the beauty of life. After bumping your head one last time, you are finished. Next to the entrance is a small museum that can give you more of an idea of the daily life during the construction. Unfortunately, it is not allowed to film inside. Three iconic mountains had been damaged and hundreds of people lost their lives for this endeavor. Today the tunnels are a reminder of a dark part of Japanese history and of the value of peace. I'm sorry for this rather sad video. I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Thank you for watching and see you next time.